Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. This is going to be part two of the cup of the Lord. Now, turn your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah. We're going to read chapter 25, and this will be at least part two. I might make a part three, I'm not sure. Uh, but we're going to be covering the Old Testament, and then maybe I'll take a, make a part three out of the New Testament. But Jeremiah figures very prominently with the cup. So let's go to Jeremiah chapter 25 and verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. That was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Now, Jehoiakim was the uh, king of Josiah, as it says here. Josiah was a good king. The Lord loved Josiah, and Josiah loved the Lord. But Jehoiakim was not the same as his father, so. Verse 2. The which Jeremiah the prophet spake unto all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, from the thirteenth year of Josiah, the king of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, that is the three and twentieth year, the word of the Lord hath come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye have not hearkened. Oh yeah, I, sp I spoke, but you didn't listen. Verse 4. And the Lord hath sent unto you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened nor inclined your ear to hear. They said, Turn ye again now every one from his evil way and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord hath given unto you and to your fathers forever and ever. How long is forever and ever? And go not after other gods to serve them and to worship them, and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord, that ye might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, because ye have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. What? Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant? You know, when you think about it, even Satan serves God in his own purpose and own way even doing wickedness. I know that's hard to believe, but, um, you know, uh, Satan serves a purpose in God's plan. He's going to deceive the nations. But Nebuchadnezzar is called God's servant. I believe in the book of Daniel, chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar wrote that chapter in the book of Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He wasn't a particularly righteous king that I remember. Remember, he set up the, uh, the idol, but yet under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he wrote Daniel chapter 4. Check it out. I'm not lying to you. Got no reason to lie to you. 
I don't make money doing this. I mean, why would I lie to you? I, I, don't, I don't get anything. So, Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and an hissing and perpetual desolations. Now that doesn't sound very good. This is why I, I'm, I'm not real crazy about reading the book of Jeremiah. Everybody talks about the love of God, the love of God, the love of God. But this isn't the love of God. This is the wrath of God. You don't want to be on God's receiving end of his wrath. And yet these are God's chosen people, Judah. And will utterly destroy them and make them in astonishment and in hissing and perpetual desolations. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones and the light of the candle. Jesus is the light of the world, right? And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. And it shall come to pass, when 70 years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans, and will make it perpetual desolations. Is Babylon desolate to this day? Yeah, there is no, there is no capital of Babylon. It's just ruins. It's a perpetual desolation. And I will bring upon that land all my words which I have prophesied against it. I'm sorry, which I have pronounced against it. Even all that is written in this book which Jeremiah hath prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also, and I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. Here it comes. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me, Take the wine cup of this fury at my hand. Take the wine cup of this fury at my hand and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. The cup of fury. Boy, that don't sound good, does it? And they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the sword that I will send among them. Then took I the cup at the Lord's hand and made all the nations to drink to whom the Lord had sent me. To wit, Jerusalem and the cities of Judah and the kings thereof and the princes thereof to make them a desolation and astonishment and hissing and a curse as it is this day. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and his servants, and his princes, and all his people, and all the mingled people, and all the kings of the land of Uz, and all the kings of the land of the Philistines, and Ashkelon, and Azah, and Ekron, and the remnant of Ashdod, Edom, Moab, and the children of Ammon, and all the kings of Tyrus, and all the kings of Zidon, and the kings of the isles which are beyond the sea. Dedan, and Tima, and Buz, and all that are in the utmost corners. And all the kings of Arabia, and all the kings of the mingled people that dwell in the desert. And all the kings of Zimri, and all the kings of Elam, and all the kings of the Medes. And the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world which are upon the face of the earth, and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink ye, and be drunken, and spew, and fall, and rise no more, because of the sword which I will send among you. 
So spew just means to vomit it out of your mouth, throw up, right? Drink ye and be drunken and spew and fall and rise no more because of the sword which I will send among you. And it shall be if, if they refuse to take the cup at thine hand to drink, then shalt thou say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Ye shall certainly drink. For lo, I begin to bring evil on the city, which is called by my name, and ye shall be utterly un and should ye be utterly unpunished? Ye shall not be unpunished. For I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they that tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coasts of the earth. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth, they shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. How ye shepherds, and cry, and wallow yourselves in the ashes, ye principal of the flock, for the days of your slaughter and of your dispersions are accomplished, and ye shall fall like a pleasant vessel. And the shepherds shall have no way to flee, nor the principal of the flock to escape. A voice of the cry of the shepherds and a howling of the principal of the flock shall be heard, for the Lord hath spoiled their pasture. And the peaceable habitations are cut down because of the fierce anger of the Lord. He hath forsaken his covert as a lion, for their land is desolate because of the fierceness of the oppressor and because of his fierce anger. All right, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 51. You know, when people study the book of Revelation, and the book, the, the very name Revelation means to reveal. It means to reveal. People say, well, I don't understand Revelation. Well, it means to reveal. I mean, it's not hidden. It's just that all the symbol Symbolism comes from the Old Testament, and people haven't bothered to read it. But Jeremiah 51 gives you a glimpse into mystery Babylon in the, in the book of Revelation. So let's take a look. And if you've never read the book of Daniel, you'll... You know, you just wouldn't understand what Babylon's all about. I mean, Nebuchadnezzar set up a golden image, well, an image, an idol, and commanded that everybody worship it. I mean, and yet he wrote, he was responsible for Daniel chapter 4. So let's take a look. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. So evidently, Babylon rose up against the Lord. Verse 2. And will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land, for in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. Against him that bendeth, let, let the archer bend his bow, and against him that lifteth himself up in his brigadine, and spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her host. 
Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. Now you got to realize, Babylon invaded Judah and Jerusalem, destroyed a great number of them. Were what was left was taken captivity. And then, 70 years later, the Persians, the Medes and the Persians came and destroyed Babylon. And the Medes and the Persians allowed Judah to return to rebuild Jerusalem and to worship their God. You know who the Persians are today? Iran. You would think that uh, if, the, if the people calling themselves Jews today over in the Middle East, remembering this, they would have fond feelings of the Persians, but they don't. They want the United States, the military arm, to destroy Iran. Iran's never attacked the United States. So, if you want to know who in the Middle East did attack the United States, look up the, uh, the attack on the USS Liberty, L-I-B-E-R-T-Y, and, and you'll know who attacked the United States ship. And it wasn't Iran. So, verse 5. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts, though their land be filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Let you know a little secret. God hated sin then, and he still hates sin today. Verse 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon, and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. In other words, payback time. Doesn't this sound like the same language uh, in Revelation? It says, be not, you know, uh, come out of her, my people. Come out of mystery Babylon. Be not partakers with her plagues. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a... Take a look at that, probably. Uh, so keep that in mind. It says, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. Iniquity is sin, people. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Listen carefully. Babylon hath been a golden cup a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. Didn't, didn't the Bible and, and Mystery Babylon say that the, uh, she made all the, the nations drunk with fornication and her witchcrafts? And I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but doesn't the Bible say that? We're going to cover that a little bit. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her. Take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. I don't think so. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her, and let us go, everyone, into his own country, for her judgment reacheth unto heaven, and is lifted up even to the skies. This ties right into Revelation, Mystery Babylon. All right, let's go to the book of Revelation, because this ties right in with it. Chapter 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials. So this is the tribulation period. 
and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand. Having a golden cup in her hand. Remember the Lord said that Babylon hath been a golden cup in the hand of the Lord, right? So this woman has, having a golden cup in her hand full of, of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Hmm. And go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. You know, this is the kind of stuff that those people, those free will churches, Baptist churches and what have you, this is the, these are the kind of verses that just freak them out. They can't handle this stuff. Do you know that there's peoples whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world? Oh, yeah. Do you think Judas Iscariot, his name was written in the book of life and the Lord blotted it out? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not going to tell you definitely 100% it wasn't, but, you know, he's called the son of perdition. How can you be the son of perdition? To be, go into perdition means to fall. And let's face it, the uh, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the second one, uh, the beast, the false prophet, the antichrist, he was born to go to hell. I mean, that's some pretty hard stuff, people. So, so there's a beast that was and is not, and yet is. And here, uh, verse 9, and here's the mind that hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Okay. And everybody points to Rome. Rome's got seven mountains. Yeah, it does. But so does Moscow. So does Seattle, Washington, Microsoft. Um, from what I understand, so does Istanbul, Turkey. It was part of Constantinople. And so does Jerusalem. Did you know that? Jerusalem has seven mountains. It's built on seven mountains. It does. But everybody points to Rome. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen and one is and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. Oh yeah, when this king comes, it's going to be bad news. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. 
And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called, called, and chosen, and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. And the torn horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his wish. I'm sorry. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree and give their kingdoms unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Hmm. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Now, if you want to know who this city is, I did an entire study on it. Just type in Mystery Babylon in the search with Chaplain Bob Walker, and I will go and show you from the Bible alone. And then they could argue, well, it's Rome, it's Mecca, it's Jerusalem. No, it's the United States. No, it's New York City. What does the Bible say? That's what we ought to be doing, you know. All right, so let's go back to Jeremiah. All right, Jeremiah 51, verse 9. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go, everyone, into his own country, for her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness... And what is our righteousness? Well, that's Christ. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes for his devices against Babylon to destroy it because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Set up the standards upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes for the Lord hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwellest upon many waters. Didn't we just read that the, the whore that sitteth on many waters is tongues and, uh, and peoples and, you know. Yeah. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. For the Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, how's that? You know, you get in the court and you swear on a, a stack of Talmuds uh, that you swear to God. I mean, I'm sorry, um, sw uh, swear on a Bible that you swear to God. But who does God swear by? The Lord of hosts hath sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee. He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom, and hath stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh, he maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Every man is brutish, by his knowledge, every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molten, Im his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are vanity, the work of errors. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance, the Lord of hosts, is his name. Now we're talking about Israel here. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Now, if you believe in the Israel identity message of Christians, this was fulfilled. 
what what group of people used a battle axe? Well, the European nations did. A battle axe is not as fast as a sword, but I tell you what, when a battle axe hits a shield, it'll shatter it. Uh, you know, a sword's a lot faster, but a battle axe is a lot more power. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Do you know that we destroyed the kingdom of Mexico? We destroyed the Aztec Empire. We destroyed the, the kingdoms in Africa and Asia. There was a time when Western civilization ruled the world. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. A hand, a ship full of Spaniards destroyed the Aztec Empire, of which they built Mexico City on the ruins of their capital. The Aztecs did human sacrifice and cannibalism, and a handful of Spaniards destroyed the Aztec Empire, which was heathen to the core. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms, and with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman, and with thee will I break in pieces old and young, and with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock, and with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen, and with thee I will break in pieces captains and rulers. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyeth all the earth. And I will stretch out mine hand upon thee and will roll thee down from the rocks and will make thee a burnt mountain. And they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations. But thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. Hmm. You see, Babylon was the first world empire. They basically conquered all the known world. Verse 27. Set ye up a standard in the land, blow the trumpet amongst, among the nations, prepare the nations against her, call together against her the nations of Ararat, Mini, and Ashinaz, appoint a captain against her, cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars, prepare against her the nations of the kings of the Medes, the captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of his dominion. And the land shall tremble in sorrow, for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon, to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They have remained in their holds. Their, their might hath failed. They became as women. They have burnt her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. One post shall run to meet another, and, another, and one messenger to meet another, to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end, and that the passages were stopped, and the reeds they have burned with fire, and the men of war were affrighted. I mean, I'm sorry, and the men of war are affrighted. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor, it is time to thresh her. Yet a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, hath devoured me, he hath crushed me, he hath made me an empty vessel, he hath swallowed me up like a dragon, he hath filled his belly with my delicates, he hath cast me out. Now obviously this is speaking in the sense of what Nebuchadnezzar did to Judah and Jerusalem, right? The violence done to me and to my flesh be upon Babylon. All the inhabitants of Zion say, and my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea shall Jerusalem say. Therefore, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will please thy cause, and take vengeance for thee, and I will dry up her sea, 
and make her springs dry. And Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons, an astonishment, and an hissing without an inhabitant. They shall roar together like lions, they shall yell as lions whelps. In their heat I will make their feasts, and I will make them drunken, that they may rejoice and sleep a perpetual sleep, and not awake, saith the Lord. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams with he goats. How is Shechem taken, and how is the praise of the whole earth surprised? How is Babylon become an astonishment among the nations? The sea is come upon Babylon, she is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof. Her cities are a desolation, a dry land and a wilderness, a land wherein no man dwelleth, neither doth any son of man pass thereby. And I will punish Bel in Babylon, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he hath swallowed up, and the nations shall not flow together any more unto him, yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. Uh, Bel was just the name of one of their false gods. Okay. Verse 45. My people, go ye out of the midst of her, and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. In other words, flee, get out of there. And lest your heart faint, you fear for the rumor that ye shall be heard in the land. A rumor shall come forth shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor, and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heaven and the earth and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon, for the spoiler shall come unto her from the north, saith the Lord. As Babylon hath caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. Ye that have escaped the sword, go away, stand not still. Remember the Lord afar off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are confounded because we have heard reproach. Shame hath covered our faces, for strangers are come into the sanctuary of the Lord's house. Wherefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will do judgment upon her graven images, graven images, and through all her land the wounded shall groan, though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet for me shall spoilers come unto her, saith the Lord. A sound of a cry cometh from Babylon, and great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans, because the Lord hath spoiled Babylon and destroyed out of her the great voice, when her waves do roar like great waters, the voice I'm sorry, a, a noise of their voice is uttered. Because the spoilers come upon her, even upon Babylon, and her mighty men are taken, every one of their bows is broken, for the Lord God of recompenses shall surely requite. And I will make drunk her princes, and her wise men, her captains, and her rulers, and her mighty men, and they shall sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake, saith the king, whose name is is the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken, and her high gates shall be burned with fire, and the people shall labor in vain, and the folk in the fire, and they shall be weary. The word which Jeremiah the prophet commanded Shershiah, the son of Neriah, the son of Maaseiah, when he went with Zedekiah, the king of Judah, into Babylon in the fourth year of his reign, and this Shariah was a quiet prince. So Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come upon Babylon, even all these words that are written against Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Sariah, When thou comest to Babylon, and shalt see, and shalt read all these words, then shalt thou say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off, that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but that it shall be desolate forever. And it shall be, when thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind a stone to it, and cast it into the midst of the Euphrates. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and shall not rise from the evil thing that I will bring upon her, and they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. Boy, that's a big chapter, huh? 